Hi, this is Paul Lynch from the Tech Modeler channel, and uh, in my last update, um, uh, final reveal of the uh, X Craft submarine, I said I'd possibly be doing a tank next. Uh, uh, after reading the book a little bit uh, on the X Craft, and, and obviously the, the, the kit you can see in front of you, which is the Sea Hound, or, or uh, uh, basically it's called Seal, they called it Seal eventually. I'm going to be building this model next. The reason it fits in quite nicely with the X Craft, because uh, Follow on from the Tirpitz raid, um, the Germans managed to, to recover two X craft. It damaged, obviously, but damaged uh, from from the from the seabed from underneath the Tirpitz, and they actually used the information they gleaned from that to actually produce, eventually, this this midget sub. This was uh, wasn't a four-man crew though. This was a two-man crew, and um, so this is going to be an inbox. Uh, review of the kit, uh, not a build review because I'll do that as obviously because I'm going to build it straight afterwards. So this one I'm going to do an inbox review. Now I, I've i seen some other people who have built this and it's really brilliantly built and I love it, love the fact that it looks nice. It's very, it's in the same scale as the um, X-Craft so it will sit along nicely. It is a smaller submarine even though, uh, but, but it's it's obviously got a large armament with torpedoes too, carried externally as you can see on the photograph here. Um, I'm not sure about the colour of the torpedo nose, uh, I think I said that in the last uh, video I mentioned about it, because to me it seems too bright a colour, uh, and if you're quite near the surface I think that could possibly stand out quite quite uh, clearly. I don't know though, but I'm going to read, go into it and if I think that I can uh, do it that colour I will. It will add a different definition to the model, but uh, there you go, and I quite like the camouflage scheme they've done on the, on the top of the sub as well. I think it's to give the effect of the, the ripples when you look down through the sea, it can actually uh, sort of disappear a little bit when submerged. Um, another thing about the submarine is it um, it was very hard to detect on sonar. Evidently, once they'd fired the torpedoes, they could actually uh, cruise away at a uh, very low speed on, on the seabed and basically be not to be detected because the actual radar that sent the message out for the ping it wouldn't couldn't get a ping off this particular submarine not very not very easily so it was pretty much an undetectable one so they did make some improvements obviously over what uh, what, what what they're doing with the larger subs obviously a massive submarine would actually uh, ping easily but this was very small evidently could just cruise along very low slow speed even the screw at the rear or the actual screw or, or propeller propeller depending on which way you want to call it would actually not give off a great deal of sound um this submarine was actually uh, uh, propelled by purely battery power evidently um and because it, but it had a good, a good, um, a reasonable distance. I think it's about 500 miles. Anyway, so let's get to the kit. And uh, basically, this kit number is um, there's a CB35053. It's in 135th scale, and it's a German submarine. And it's a, and I'm going to be building the build B5 version, which is the last version they modified. On the back here, we've got the actual original, original, um, original one where we actually had to put and it looks really nice with that housing because a lot of modern submarines have got that housing uh, the circular housing around the propeller but they obviously decided it wasn't good enough and they modified it to the B5 version which is basically with a straight down rudder similar to the X-Craft with the um, with the propeller in case there. So this kit comes along with it's got um, photo etch parts for it and uh, and it's not going to be a massively long build because it's because uh, of the size and the scope. What I did like about it, it's something different. It's got a clear dome on the top, and evidently a clear dome could actually go up to 47 meters below the surface without actually um, shattering. But obviously there was an inner hatch inside as well. So basically, if, if once it got to, went down, they, they closed, well, submerged, they closed the, the hatch below the dome. So if the glow, glow uh, the dome did actually um, shatter due to, due to the depth it was going, it wouldn't have made any difference because the sub wouldn't have sunk because it still had that normal hatch door between the the, the dome and the actual in, in, so internal works of the sub. It's um, it, it looks a bit, bit like a normal U-boat when you think about the shape, and I think that's what it looks like. But they did actually take, as I said earlier on, a lot of information from the X-Craft to actually build this up. So let's have a look in the box, basically. I have actually been in the box, obviously, let's have a look, so there we go. Um, there we go. So what we've got in the box now is a set of instructions. Um, nice colour ones. Uh, a bit of history there about it, basically. This was the final ver variant. Uh, with a B5 version, which I'll be being called the Sea Hound or Hand, depending on how they Germans pronounce it. But it's called Seal. We regret they call it a Seal. Obviously, it got code word as Seal for the English. Carried two torpedoes. It had a, um, a speed of seven knots, 
and a range of 500 kilometers. Surfaced, it was four knots. So it's quite good. Um, the submarine's fixed um, 10 meter periscope, which it was fixed in permanently raised position. It, it, it actually says it had two lenses incorporated in it, basically. One was actually to see normally in, in the forward and, all, and when they rotated it. Another one was seen straight up, so it could actually come to the surface and they could use it to spot aircraft or and search the sky before they actually um, uh, uh, surfaced, um, obviously to perfect, protect them against the air, air attack. So it's pretty good. So that, that, that's it, basically to check the sky for certain, before surfacing. So it's a really good uh, idea. Anyway, but um, let's have a look at the instructions in quick, quickly. Here we go. Um, usual call out, the illustrations, bits about what, how not, what to do, optional, wash, uh, uh, do not cement, uh, uh, drill a hole on, on, or fit up, fill a hole, that's what it goes there. All the usual stuff about and, and removing stuff with a knife, the usual stuff. An open hole out, there's another symbol. All the symbols you come to expect, plus all the colours. Um, it's got uh, the, quite a few colours actually. It's got Mr. Hobby, Hobby Colour, Humbrol, and Tamiya colours. Now, I'm going to be using some um, life colour paints that I've got for the, from the Jumal Kids, Kids Marine uh, submarine set. So I've got a set of paints for this, uh, which I bought for a larger 170 second scale sub. And, um, one of the standard ones but it, it'll fit in lovely for for this build as well so that's really good i'm going to use a similar technique that i did on me x craft i will be painting the vehicle uh, the vehicle painting the sub in, in its colors as it should do and any camouflage if i decide to do it onto it and then i will be giving it that um, um owlclad 2 clear coat which is a, like a satiny uh, start style coating ready for a bit of oil, oils to give it a bit of a weathering again it won't get much weathering because it only came out in 1944 uh, so it came out late in the war but it was the most uh, most successful of the german midget submarines and i still think that's mainly because they took so much information away from the x-craft when they actually found got the two off the bottom of the seabed uh, under the turpits so good selection of colors and it's got quite a few colors there's steel uh, red, silver, flat, flat white, black, gold. I think that's have some of the embellishments on it. Um, uh, obviously, grey sky, dark grey, uh, and medium sea grey. So there's quite a few colours there, uh, but they are called out as I said. But you can actually get crossovers from different other paints as well. But it does give you a good selection if you've got hobby colour, or or Mr. Hobby, or Tamiya colours, or Humble in your select collection. It actually gives you a good selection. It, um, the white one, it doesn't actually say anything about it in the umbral colour, but obviously white's white, so it's not a problem. But as a switcher would say, uh, not all whites are, are true whites anyway. Right, here we go. Then it gives you actually the sprue cord out. Um, I don't know if I've come down any nearer. Yep, it gives you the sprue cord out. Um, basically, the torpedoes, this is a pack for the torpedoes. And this is a coning tail, right? It's got a small coning tail on there bits and pieces you've got the stand quite a nice stand but again i'm going to be i'll be using that i will use it for the build because it's obviously easier to keep it on um and i'll most probably be playing to paint it gold as well so it looks nice and all black or gold one color i'll decide on the time then you've got all the extra bits here uh, for the different versions uh, these two bits here on the on the actual b version i think this this has actually got these extra extra little tanks on the side for the b version but i'll find that when i get to it and the main hull of the ship of uh, the actual sub sorry it's off camera and the main main hole, as you can see there. So it's quite a good call out for instruction, and it's a decent set of seagulls. There's a bit of colour there, I must admit, compared to the X-Graph. So there is a bit of colour there. Not sure if I'm going to use it, many of them, but uh, it depends on uh, which one I build. So anyway, then, then, then it's then carts on the thing. Now, how many bits have we got? We've got so I'll just call out and see how many parts. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven so there's only seven uh, illustrations pages for extra parts so there's seven stages in the build it's quite not quite good and uh, it looks an interesting build i think we'll just show you basically there you go the torpedo got left and a right one so obviously got there sided we've obviously got the propellers there there for the actual um, torpedoes it looks like they're contra rotating but i don't think so i think they're just uh, staggered and and propel it for the uh, gives it a bit more propulsion through the sea and then you go on to, and then basically that's the torpedoes built up to number two and then you start with the actual sub itself and uh, number three pretty straightforward stuff um good thing is there are there are connection pins to actually line up the hole and um, of course you always test fit before you do that i don't know if you can see that if i just come over a bit further there we go 
there's, there's actually pin connections around here. Whoops, okay, let's get focused. There you go. Pin connections actually line up the whole pieces. Now I've got another sub to do, 170 second scale, but it's 170 second scale. And uh, it's, it's basically, it looks like a bit of a vac form sort of fit because there's no actual bark. So I'm going to have to make my own connection points for that sub later on and when I do it. But I'm mostly really be back on a Corvette after this anyway. So anyway, so here we go. So it's quite a nice set. That's a part of the sub. There's the propellers. You've got the two choices, as you can see. Like one with a circus section there, like a tube with the actual propellers inside it. That is the modern way. If you look at a lot of those mini, uh, mini subs they use for, for deep sea diving, you find a lot of them have got that circle around it. I think it focuses the actual propulsion, and, and also that would be the steering bit as well because the actual propeller would steer as well. But I, but they've actually made a late one. This is a later version on the B5, which is the one I'll be building, and they took that away and went back to a standard rudder bit like the X Craft. So. It looks that actually more it looks more modern when you think about it, but this is what they went back to because I think they found it was much more uh, viable and easier, perhaps probably. Then the next page carries on with the basic sub build. And you just see it builds up with it, and even got the clear dome on the top that actually goes there and the bits and pieces, and and that's the hatch underneath it as well. So. It was pretty good by the looks of it. It looks uh, pretty interesting. And I think having that clear dome is going to add something slightly different to what the X-Craft is, even though I really did, did, did really enjoy and, uh, the build of that. So pretty straightforward, I think we can see there. If I'll come through, there we go. Yep, there you go. Then you come over to this side, and you're still carrying on with the basic sub connections. This is on part five now. And we're actually adding the torpedoes, and obviously the mechanisms that go on the side. And also the resist mechanism, and also the actual coning tower there that you can see that slots over the top of everything there. Uh, pretty interesting. It's going to look a, a very unusual little sub, really. It's going to look more sub like than the, than the X Craft, even though it's, the other one was built for purpose. There we go. So it goes and shows you about building the stand up. Whoops. Sorry about that. I'm going to have to make an extended camera there. And you can actually see the building up the base. Pretty basic, three, three, three pieces, really. And it just sits into there quite nicely. And it could be the point is that you could actually build a wooden stand and, and actually make the mark and actually fit these into the wooden stand. So basically the only bit of plastic that would be holding the sub up and the rest will be made out of timber. So it might be a worthwhile decision to do, just slot them in for, for temporary while I'm building it and actually then build make make a nice oak stand and put those use these plastic bits or cut and make a pattern and cut two nice mahogany uh, oak ones out. Who knows? <coughs> <coughs> but that's for the summer. I can't do it in work in the shed in the, in the winter. And then we go over to the other side, and then you can see the final bits. And then that's just telling you how to add the extra bits. Now for the B5, yeah, I was right. For the B5, you have these extra plates on the side. They go on the side, just one on either side. Makes it a little bit different to the standard one. So there you go. And that's it. So there's not much to build when you think about it. When you look through the pages. So let's have a look at the parts now, the sprue parts. Put that over there out of the way. Right, here we go. The first thing you notice there is, oh, it's all stuck together. Uh, what I'll do is I'll get some out. I'm, I think I'll leave them in the packets for now, because you're going to see them in the build. Right, let's go to this bit. I'm sorry about the packets, but it is, this is the scarf. You see how small, small it is. It's not a massive submarine. Um, it's, um, it's about four inches shorter than the, the X-Craft, so so it's a reasonable size. Remember, it's only a two-man crew. So there you go. I'll come back. I think I better come back out. That's that. Right. So you can see it's uh, that. That gives you an idea of the size of it. It'll be in my hands there. The details on it are really good. All the moldings really good. It's there's raised detail, so you're gonna have to go careful when you join the two holes together. But it, but it's. It looks really nice and neat. There's a definite texture on the actual hole as well, and the detail is really fine. It's made by, by obviously Bronco this particular kit, so it look, it, it's excellent, actually good. You've got a bit of oh, I thought that was damaged, but it's not. It's a bit of moulding that's come off, so that's okay. So that's 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 the bit, that bit there. Looks nice. The details look really flush and nice because obviously you can't, until you actually build the submarine, you can't tell how good it is. But just by looking at the moulds, it looks really nice. Then you've got two moulds the same now. And these are to do with the torpedoes. And I've got to be honest, those propellers are very thin. The actual the propellers for the actual torpedoes are very thin. I think I'll put a bit of sandpaper, a sanding stick, I can make it a bit thinner so they look a bit more to, to scale. But they 
they've they haven't got a little curve on them at all but I don't think they need it but uh, funny enough the other one has they've got a slight curve I might not fit them actually because they are quite good it, the actual details look really nice again all the mouldings are really uh, nice until you build it you can't tell but it, it, what I'm seeing I'm really liking and I do like the fact that the actual end of the torpedo is actually a dome so you haven't got to worry about a seam line running around the top there so you've only got to get rid of the seam on the two torpedo sides but the actual uh, the nose end of the torpedo is one solid dome piece really well and it looks really nice so that's that good then we come to the other bit now I might have to undo this packet excuse me while I just uh, give it a quick um, twirl get, get me mat up off of my lap you won't see this but don't worry there we go don't want to cut my leg Right, here we go, I'll take these bits out. Might give you an idea. Right, there we go. The moulding is crisp and, and it looks really nice. And the details are really um, beautiful as well. I've actually seen a photograph of the real thing and this looks very close to the photographs as well. I've actually got a book I'm going to show you briefly in a minute and uh, Switcher knows that I've got a book on submarines. I did actually send him a photograph of the, the cover once to show you, but the details on this and the hatches areas, it looks really good. It's excellent and there's those little bit side pieces to do with the, what, the extension they made. Uh, of, uh, well, I think it's to do with um, obviously diving and sub and a little area. Might even be actually extra bits. I'll, I'll be able to find out about that because I've actually got a book that covers this, as the, the same book that covers the X-Craft covers this the seal as well but the details are really really good I don't know if you can see that I think you can if I stayed about there really is really is nice so that's looking great I'm going to put that back in the packet in a minute right, inside the, the packet again we've got the extra bits we've got some photo edge parts and believe it or not they stuck it to the bag on the outside so excuse me while I do this Oh, I had to use four bits of scissors. Mine's a good thing because it does save it rattling around. See, I'll put the bag over there for the moment. I'll put the pits back. Right, in this bag, we've got the decals. I, I think one of those one of those zip bags, so that's quite good. And there you go. You can see the, the actual details are really good. And this the bit of the cover, I'll cover it back over in a minute. But look, the decals are really nice. Uh, they're obviously made, it says Bronco, so, but they, they look very fine. Do you see? I mean, I, I couldn't see these being on a submarine, but but there you go, bits, bits and pieces there. I'll have to look at some details and see what it goes on. But the decals, if you use them, look excellent, I've got to be honest. So that, that that's a really good part, so I'm going to put that to the side. And also in this packet, we've got the photo edge. And, and really another good touch is the dome. Oh, it's come off. The dome has actually come off now until I get to build it. But the dome is definitely very clear. It's very clear in the pack. I'm not going to take it out. But you can see it's actually come off the sprue. So, so obviously that's not so clever. But it looks like the dome bit is in is perfect in condition. So that's a good sign. So I'm going to leave that to one side at the moment. Have a look at that a bit later. But it looks okay. And so. Oh, the photo edge bits. Not too many parts, it look, by the looks of it, it's just uh, eight pieces and, and a stand bit. But to be honest, uh, I'm not so sure I'd use a stand bit as well. I think I'd have to do something else. But anyway, be, there it is, if you wanted to use it, it's brass. But it's got a bit of Chinese there as well, by the looks of it. But there you go. It's got the 35053 uh, kit number on it as well. So, photo etch parts is very minimal, which is sometimes is a good thing. You don't always need a lot of foam edge, and the detail on the submarine looks really good. I'm really pleased with it. I must admit, it looks nice. Yeah, the light. There you go. I think you can get what I mean. But it's the details are very crisp, very crisp and teased. And there's the main propeller, obviously, for the wing. And it's got a little sort of a curvy to it, so it looks it looks the part. And and it's quite thin as well, so that's excellent. Good. Right, so that's my next build then. And so, I should be starting that sometime today. 
uh, most probably but later on this afternoon and uh, I'm looking forward to it and and as I said it's a really uh, nice alongside the X-Craft due to the fact that that's exactly where they got a lot of the information on I don't know how many more minutes I've got I've only got eight minutes left so I'll better go because it's going a bit longer this video so that's the inbox through of the um, Bronco Midget Submarine Sea Hunt or Seal as they they say for it in English I believe that's it so that's that's the basic uh, what she looks like obviously I'm not doing that tail end I'm doing the, the later version which is the B5 so anyway I'm just going to call a midget submarine a two-man crew and German and basically the info used f on two capture or two recovered um, X craft submarines that was used on the Tirpitz mission uh, was used to get clean information and that's how they, and they produced this is what they produced from it in the end of the day there was a version just before this I can't remember the name of it at the moment but it's gone from my mind but basically the one version it was a it wasn't a very successful vine it very similar in some ways but the point is it, it in the end it was such a, it was a bit of a failure so what they used it is for training for the crews of the seals so that's what it is so the previous version to this was only used for training purposes but this one was the one that actually was used in operationals and it was quite successful in a short time it was actually used as well anyway I'm going to show you the book now here we go the one, and switcher would be interested in this one and and here she is and that's the book I got now I don't know whether I can come out any further not much further but there you go I'm gonna to have to make my my uh, camera a bit a bit a bit higher and uh, so I can actually get a bit more in but this is the book and it's by uh, Paul Kemp it's midget submarines of Second World War and you can see a perfect perfect picture in there of the internal works of the X craft and you can see the engine at the back and the exhaust that comes out which I told you picture that bit at the back was an exhaust and you can see it is. must have a non-return valve in there because obviously you want exhaust to come out but when it goes underwater you want it to seal so it doesn't actually go they must probably got a, a hand sealer inside I'm not, I wouldn't know but I'm presuming but it but definitely been a non-return valve in it so I may allow for, uh, fumes to leave but not nothing to come back in and obviously a pressure water thing as soon as it comes in it shuts it up but anyway so it's a really good interesting book I've read quite a bit in some bits and pieces about the old x craft and what you do get was which was really good was this this plan and this is quite a big one and this is for the x the x craft and for the one I'm building next the, the seal so if I turn it over so you've got the seal on one side Gives you, and it gives you call outs on saying what, what bits where so it gives you I don't, so it's really clever but the thing that Richard would be interested in the way I found out bits and pieces was on this side was the X craft and again call outs so it was really good that's why I found out all these bits and pieces uh, about what each bit was for the NP if you go there if I put that bit there the NP which was I said about the guard NP if you go up to MP up the top here, gotta to find a little little devil, because it's not in order. And NP night periscope, and that's a night periscope. And then you've got AP, and if you go to AP, it's the attack periscope, which is the long one there. And then A was the aerial, that's the actual aerial for the transmitter, for they're using the radio wireless there, A. That's the actual guard bit that goes up in the curve, which I didn't know at the time, I just looked at it the first time. And then you've got the the actual tube at the back of the C, if I go C, that's the compass. Believe it or not, that bit there is the compass for the compass. So it's quite clever really if you think about it. So I've put mine in the raised position, but it comes up for as a compass to give them guidance obviously, magnetic compass. Uh, what else is there? There's the, um, oh, well, obviously the hatches and everything, bits and pieces. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. I don't want to call out everything, but there's loads of stuff and there's uh, F, F, H, free flooding holes, so FHA, and the bit at the front that really interested me was um, it's got, um, if I'm going to try and show you it now, excuse me, I don't want to rip the paper. There's a circle at the front, it's got DV, uh, DTV, which is this bit here on the sub, and it's clearly on the sub as well. And when you go to, what was it, um, DTV, is the diving tank vent, so that, that circle a bit there. Right at the front is the diving vent. So 
It's a very interesting bit of paper. Like I said, it's got both subs on there, and I was really surprised with that, with the book. I'm running time on four, four minutes down. But anyway, this book basically has got so much more information. If I can go in. Photographs. It's not going to focus now, is it? 